So we talked about what Service Builder is. Now we'll talk a little bit about how to use it. So a typical service builder workflow defines model entities and finder queries within the service XML. This is the main configurable file that generates all of the other classes. Then you'll run the build service task. You'll modify implementation classes so that you have the desired behavior, the business logic. Then you'll run build service task again in order to update those methods. And then you'll develop your application. So there are times where we have to rebuild the service and we would have to rebuild the service if one, the service XML has been modified. And so maybe you added a new entity to the service XML, or maybe you deleted one or changed even the columns for some of the entities. And then you'll also have to rebuild the service if the implementation class has any method signatures that have been changed. So maybe you were writing a method and you added a new argument to it or you removed one, or you added a new method, you would have to rebuild the service in these cases. So let's talk about extending service implementations. Liferate recommends you create CRUD with the following patterns. So you will have your entity name prepended to the service impl, and these are the classes that are generated by Liferate. There is the add method. So this will take in the user ID, a group ID, all entity fields, and then an optional service context. And then this will return the entity you just created. It also comes with an update method, and this takes a primary key or the key that refers to an existing entity. And then you'll also take in whatever fields that you want to update with the optional service context parameter and then it will return an updated entity and then finally you also have the delete method and this passes in a primary key referring to the entity you're referring to and then this will return the deleted entity Here's an example of extending a service implementation. For example, we might talk about journal articles and you wanna add an article. And so you might include all of the relevant fields for an article entity. So you'll start with the user ID, group ID, and then you'll include all of the relevant parameters here. And with this, in the method definition, you might manipulate this, you might create an entity and then add this into the database. Mm -hmm.